So first we talked about how electric fields exert forces on particles, thereby pushing them around. It's all very pushy. Where do electric fields come from? Charged particles. So just as charge is what electric field interacts with to exert forces, charge is also the source of electric field. It seems very circular, but it's not really the electric field is a thing that's out in space, and charge indicates how strongly something, the electric charge on a particle indicates how strongly it couples or interacts with that electric field. Gravity works the same way. If you think about it, when we talk about gravity, the more massive an object, the stronger its gravitational field, all right? But also, if you remember, if an object's falling towards the Earth, the more massive the object, the stronger the force of gravity on the object. So it's the same way with electric field. But um, because I want you to think about electric fields as real things, that's why I started by talking about electric fields as being out there and pushing on charges rather than just thinking about the force between two charges. The electric field is really there. It's not just a calculational convenience. It's a real thing, and we'll, we'll come back to that, especially when we talk about electromagnetic waves later. But for now, we want to sort of understand, okay, we've talked about how do you figure out the force on a particle from an electric field. Now we want to talk about how do you figure out what the electric field is as a result of another particle. So first problem, a charge of minus 0.01 coulombs is at the origin. What is the electric field at this, the position it tells you right here? So I'll write up the position. We want to, we're going to choose R as the position, I'm just giving it that name right now, of minus 0.25 comma 0.5 comma 0.75 meters. But that meters is outside the whole vector because it applies to all three units. And then the charge that's at the origin is minus 0.015 coulombs. What is the electric field at that position? Well, okay, so I'm gonna start by drawing my axes. Here's X, here's Y, and I have to do this in 3D because I've got a Z here, so there's Z. Here's my charge. I wanna make sure my coordinate system is right-handed, and what that really means is that X hat cross Y hat has to equal Z hat. So X hat points along the X axis, for cross product, I point this, then curl my fingers to the second thing in the cross product, and sure enough, Z points out of the board. So we're good. And then the position where we want this is X of minus, so let's make that one, right? That's one, and here's one on Z. So it's minus 0.25 in X, 0.5 in Y, and 0.75 in Z. So it's gonna be something like this. Uh, that looks like 0.75 in Z, about 0.5 in Y, and minus 0.25 in X, right? So that's, this is the position where we want the electric field. So how do you calculate the electric field? Well, remember we have this E equals E vector equals KQ over R, R hat. That's KQ over R squared, R hat. This is the electric field at position R vector, so at XYZ, where R, of course, is the distance X squared the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, that's the distance from the origin. And then r hat is the unit vector that points in the r vector direction, which is away from the origin. Okay, so we can do this. This isn't too hard. Let's start with k, which I foolishly haven't memorized. k is 8.9875 times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared, okay? Q here is minus 0.015 coulombs over R squared. Let's just go ahead and write the whole thing out. In fact, um, I'm not going to put in the square root because it's R squared, not R. So it's the square root of, or the square, the square of the, never mind. It's minus 0.25 meters squared plus 0.5 meters squared plus 0.75 meters squared. All right, this is the magnitude of the electric field. So I'm gonna stick that in my calculator and figure out what it is. By the way, I lied to you. This is not the magnitude of the electric field um, because it's gonna come out negative and magnitudes are always positive. So what this really is, what I'm gonna do is say this is the electric field and I'm gonna leave the R hat on the end and we'll worry about the R hat in a moment. So if you calculate this number, um, you get minus 1.5407, 0.5407. Let's think about the units. One of the coulombs and the coulomb squared will cancel this coulomb. 
I have meter squared here, and on the bottom I have meter squared plus meter squared plus meter squared, so good. These all have the same units. You can sum them, so it's meter squared. That'll cancel. You get newtons per coulomb, which is good because that is um, the proper units for electric field. So in one sense, I'm done, right? I have, um, I lied to you again. I left off the 10 to the 8th. That's pretty important times 10 to the 8th newtons per coulomb r hat. So in one sense I'm done. I have the electric field. Its direction is towards the origin. In fact, I can do the try to draw it now. It's going to be sort of that way, where if I continued, it would hit the origin. So it's pointing back towards the origin. So that is what the electric field at that point is. OK, good. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and give you the x, y, and z components of this electric field. Um, so to do that, what I'm going to do is actually work out what r hat is in terms of x, y, and z. So remember, r hat is just x over r, y over r, z over r. Um, so we can figure that out easily enough, because x, y, z we have over there is 0.25 meters, comma, 0.5 meters, comma, 0.75 meters. And then I have to multiply by the whole thing by 1 over r which is 1 over the square root of 0.25 squared plus 0.5 squared plus 0.75 squared meters. Notice r hat's going to be unitless. All right, I'll stick these all into my calculator. All right, so if I stick these in my calculator, I get minus 0.26, and I want to keep extra digits for any intermediate numbers, minus 0.2673 comma, right, not very illuminating, 0 0.5345, and in the z direction, 0 0.8018. Right, so that is what r hat is. So it's pointing in the negative x direction, um, right, because r hat is actually out that way. So it's pointing in the negative x, but positive y and positive z, that's what we see here. And now if I multiply this number by all of r hat, I will t can figure out what e is in terms of x, y, and z. So if I figure out what e is in terms of x, y, and z, and I do that product, I get, and I'm going to do it to the right number of sig figs, which is 2. Right? We have 2 sig figs in q. We have 2 sig figs. This point 0.5, let's pretend it's 0 0.50, so we really have 2 sig figs. We have 2 sig figs there. I've put in plenty of extra sig figs in the constant, which you should always do. And I get 4.1 times 10 to the 7. newtons per coulomb in the x direction. In the y direction, I get minus 8.2 times 10 to the 7. 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb. And in the z direction, I get minus 1.2 times 10 to the 8. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say minus 1.24 times 10 to the 8th newtons per coulomb. It looks like too many sig figs, but you know this starts with a 1, which means this is a smaller number than this. So the second sig fig, if it's off by one, is a greater fraction than that. But also, since this is 10 to the 8 and that's 10 to the 7th, I'm giving these all to the same place, which is the 10 to the 6th place here. So that's maybe more symmetric. Anyway, that is what E is in terms of x, y, and z. Here is what E is just in terms of r hat, the direction away from the origin. Either of these would actually be right answers, since I didn't specify give it to me in terms of x, y, and z. Which one do you use? That depends what you want to do with this E. If I want to go ahead and calculate a force in x, y, and z, this is the one I need. If what I'm really interested in is just more of a qualitative sense of how big it is and what's the magnitude, and of course, for this one, for sig figs, I should stop there, although maybe I'll do three because of the one again. So that's what e. If I want to get a force in direction, maybe it's more intuitive to say it's pointing towards the origin. It's less obvious that this points towards the origin, although it does. So this is what the electric field at that position is if you have a charge of minus 0.015 coulombs at the origin, and that is the first problem. All right, and the second problem, a particle with charge plus Q. Now, when I say the charge is plus Q, by implication, I'm saying this Q is a positive number. Now, it doesn't have to be, right? It's just a, a variable Q, and I could plug in a negative Q for this, and if I've done everything right, things will work. But I'm saying, let's just say it's positive for here. In fact, when I give you a number later, it will be. Um, so this is what the charge on the particle has, and its position is xs, comma, ys, comma, zs. So I'm giving you a specific xyz. I haven't given the numbers, but I'm saying xyz is a particular xyz. And I'm using subscript s for source. So this is my source particle. 
There are no other charges anywhere. So what is the electric field everywhere in space, in space excepting at the position of the charge? So wait, you're saying, how can you draw this? You don't have numbers. So what I'm going to do when you have a case like this is just sort of pick an arbitrary position. And I'll pick this position here. Right? I'm going to say that this is x, s, y, s, z, s. I've just happened to chose x and z positive and y negative. It sort of doesn't matter because I haven't told you what those are. But I've picked a position. So if there's a positive charge Q here, we know that the electric field everywhere in space is going to point away from this charge and it's going to get smaller as we get farther from the charge, right? So the electric field will do something like that, although I haven't dropped it off fast enough, right? From here to here is like four times as far away. So should, this should only be 1 16th as long as that. Let's make this a little more like doo -doo -doo. there. See, that's a little closer. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Sound effects are important. Do, do, do. Okay. Fine. So that's what it would look like around in those directions. But what I really, when I say what is the electric field everywhere in space, what that means is give me an expression for electric field as a function of x, y, and z, where I could plug in an x, y, and z and get a result that's the electric field everywhere. Well, all right. So now this is hard because the particle's not at the origin. But remember, the way it works is that the electric field is k. Q over capital R squared times capital R hat, where we define capital R in this case for this equation as the distance from the charge, and R hat is the unit vector pointing away from the charge. All right now, you say this seems needlessly complicated. Why don't I just put it at the origin? Well, for this problem, you would, but if you have more than one charge, you can't do that for both charges. All right, so capital R hat is always the vector wherever you are in space that points, it's the unit vector, so it's got just unit length and no dimensions, that points away from the charge. So how do you express r hat? Well, let's start with r vector. And so here's what I'm going to do is pick a random point in space. Now again, this is supposed to be for all points in space, so I'll just use this as an example. So at this point in space, that is what r vector is. Okay, And so remember that capital R vector is equal to r vector minus r s vector, where r vector is this one from, from the origin to here. So r vector is x comma y comma z, right? So that's where is the point in space relative to the origin. And then r s is where the source vector is. Right, so that's what, that's what capital R vector is. So this allows us to figure out what is the magnitude of capital R vector. Well, it's the magnitude of x minus xs comma y minus ys comma z minus zs. I've just done the vector subtraction. So it's a little ugly, but whatever. It's, it's the square root of x minus xs squared plus excess. See, this is done to excess. y minus ys squared plus z minus zs squared. So that's what r is. So when I square it, it'll be easier. And so then r hat is, right, it's long, but whatever. And I'm going to just summarize this as r. Capital R isn't really a given here. But if you have written down this with your answer, it's OK to say, OK, call this r. And I'm using that as a shorthand for here. As long as you have defined what this r is, then this is an OK way to write it y s over r comma z minus z s over r. Right, that's r hat. So this gives me enough now to be able to write out the answer here. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, now notice here, this r hat, I could factor out this 1 over r. Because the way multiplying a scalar by a vector works is I take this vector, um, which is actually r vector multiply it by 1 over r, and I would get the 1 over r in each thing, and it would work like that. So e here is going to equal kq um, over that r squared becomes r cubed, because I factored out this r, times x minus xs, y minus ys, z minus zs. Or if I want to, I'm going to go ahead and substitute back in for this r. It's k times q times the vector x minus xs comma y minus ys comma z minus zs divided by, and this is the slightly fancy thing, right? I'm going to take r is this square root, and I need to cube it. 
So remember, if you have the square root of something, that's the same as saying that thing to the one half. So I'm going to say the square root of x minus xs squared plus y minus ys squared plus z minus zs squared to the three halves. And so this is what e is everywhere in space in terms of the given quantities. And so what I can do now, if I had an x, s, y, s, z, s, I could plug in my x, y, and z and calculate this. Important safety tip. You have a three halves here. You notice this one half, you can't cancel that with this two here. Um, just if, if you're wondering why, try at some point just a triangle, right? If that's three and that's four, this hypotenuse will work out to be five. So you know that five squared should equal three squared plus four squared. But you know that five does not equal three plus four, I hope. Right, so if I take a square root of the left side, I get five. I take a square root of the right side, I do not get seven. I should get five also. Think about this and remember this whenever you're tempted to take. If you have a sum inside a square root, or inside anything that's to a power, you can't just factor it in the way you can if it's just a product. So this is the E, I'm gonna save that because we're gonna use that again. But I'm gonna erase the rest of the board to make room. Because now, for part B, if specifically the particle has charge, the particle has charge Q, so I'm going to write it up here, Q now becomes 0 0.00, that's not a 6, 7, 5 coulombs. And I'm going to say XS, YS, ZS is 2.5 comma minus 1.0 comma minus 1.5 meters. Right, that's the position. What is the electric field at the origin? So at the origin, that just means x equals zero, y equals zero, z equals zero. So I can plug these into this electric field. So I have E, which is equal to, let me look up my k real quick, 8.898 times 10 to the ninth. 8.898 times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared, okay, times Q, which is 0 0.0075 coulombs, times this vector, and notice since x is zero, y is zero, and z is zero, this vector is just going to become minus 2.5 meters, comma, plus 1.0 meters, comma, plus 1.5 meters, All right, so that's that vector there, I've multiplied each term by negative one because I had the minus there, divided by x minus xs is just going to be minus 2.5, so it's 2.5 squared. Let me put the meters inside here. 2.5 meters squared plus 1.0 meters squared plus 1.5 meters squared, all to the 3 halves. Now, how do you actually do this something to the 3 halves on your calculator? If you have a button that says something like y to the n or y to the x, what you can do is put in this, sum it all up, put in 3 halves and then push that button. Um, you can do that. If you don't have a button like that, what you can do is you can do this whole thing, take the square root of it, and then cube it, which means multiply it by itself three times. So I have all the numbers here that I need so I can calculate the electric field at the origin. All right, and having calculated that, I have two sig figs here. All right, two sig figs in Q is going to limit me to all these, a few other places too. Um, I'm just, and I don't think I'm going to use this again, so I'm not going to write extra digits, and then I'll just regret my poor life choices if it turns out I need this number again. 3.1 times 10 to the seventh units again. I have meters squared, meters cubed on the top. Oh dear. But on the bottom, we'll have meters squared in a square root. So you sum these meters squared, it's still meters squared. It's in a square root, so that becomes meters, but cubed. Aha, I have meters cubed top and bottom. Good. Coulomb squared, I'll cancel one of these coulombs. I'm left with newtons per coulomb, which is what I wanted. So 3.1 times 10 to the seven newtons per coulomb minus one point. 2 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb, comma, minus 1.8 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb. All right, so here's what the electric field is. This is the answer to B. One more thing you probably ought to do when you calculate something like this is make sure it's plausible. All right, first of all, I don't really have an intuition for these 10 to the 7 numbers, uh, but what, here's what you can do is you can look at all the exponents up here. So I have a 10 to the 9. And this is like a 10 to the minus 3. So 10 to the 9 times 10 to the minus 3 is like 10 to the 6, 
But I also have this is like 7 times 10 to the minus 3 and like 9 times 10 to the 6. And 7 times 9 is 60. So that's, that's 60 is something times 10. So that becomes 10 to the 6. So I'll come back to 10 to the 7. And these are all power 10 to the 0 because it's a 1. So 10 to the 7 actually is about the right size. And then is 3 minus 1.2 minus 1.8 the right direction? Let's think about that. So that would be like 3 minus 1.2 minus 1.8. Um, <laughs> if I'm going to do this, I ought to actually draw this cube where that is, because then it will make sense. So to do that, I find my eraser. Much easier said than done. I have a sponge. It's not an eraser, but it will work. So if I draw this cube where it is, it's at x of 2.5, y of minus 1, and z of minus 1.5. So that's like there. Right, so x of 2.5, uh, y of minus 1, and then z of minus 2.5, right? So if I, uh, I haven't done that right. Yeah, there it is. I did do it right. Fine. Um, so right here, it's below that point on the plane. Boop, boop. That's where it is, right? It's really hard to draw in 3D. So that's where it is. And then this vector is pointing in the, from the origin, because that's where we calculate the electric field, 3 in the plus x. So, and of course, you might say, well, that's 2.5 in x. Well, no, that's 2.5 meters in x. Electric field is in newtons per coulomb. So let's say this is 2.5 newtons per coulomb. Then it's minus 1.2, so it's like that, and minus 1.8, so it points in that direction, which, oh yeah, that looks about right. So that's what the electric field at the origin would be with a particle there. That's part B. Part C, for the charge in part B, what is the electric field at position minus 1.2, minus 1.5, 0 0.5? So now in C, I'm giving you yet another position. I'm going to draw it on here. Minus 1.2 in x, minus 1.5 in y, plus 0.5 in z. Right, so it's sort of like that. Um, so... Right, it's below that point, it's there. So here, and so we know the electric field is supposed to point away, so it should be something like that, it's sticking out of the board. So we expect a positive z component. So let's put this in, and so this one's a little bit harder. Hey, look, my eraser was right there and I couldn't find it. So now it's gonna be a little bit longer. So this position here is, I'm just gonna write it down, minus 1.2 comma minus 1.5, comma, 0.5 meters, right? So that is what x, y, z is. Again, let's just step back and think about what we're doing. We have this, which is x, s, y, s, z, s, which is equal to that. We know that. That's where our charge is. We want to find the electric field here. So this is, call it the observation point, where we're observing the electric field. That's where that is. This meters I should put outside the vector if I don't put in all three components. And I want to find the electric field there, and here is the thing that is that, that we worked out. We actually that showed up in class, too. So let's go ahead and calculate that, and I'm going to give myself more space this time, because I know I'm going to need it. So E is equal to K, which is, keep, well, I keep erasing this, which is foolish, 8.898 times 10 to the ninth Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared times Q, which is still 0 0.0075 coulombs, times, and now this vector is long, so X minus XS. X is minus 1.2, XS is 2.5 minus 2.5 meters, comma, Y, so it's Y minus YS. Y is minus 1.5 minus minus 1.0, so this becomes plus 1.0, comma, and then Z minus ZS, that's 0.5, minus minus 1.5, so that becomes 0.5 plus 1.5. I was going on too long there because the uh, camera's one gigabyte file limit got hit. So of course I had all this talking and I turn around and the screen is black. It means I've lost all kinds of stuff. Gone. Right, so um, as I was saying, I have all this in the numerator, and I have to add all this into the denominator. 
So I have x minus xs. So x, y, z is the position where we're calculating the thing. That's what x is. So x is minus 1.2 meters. Minus xs is minus 2.5 meters. This should not surprise you because you just did that right there. Squared, right? plus y minus ys, and I'm going to just copy it from here, minus 1.5 plus 1.0, right, because it was minus minus, um, meters, meters, oh, how ugly, meters plus 1.0 meters squared, and then I have 0.5 plus 1.5, 0.5 meters plus 1.5 meters squared, the whole thing to the three halves. Let's think about units. Um, again, I have meters in each one of these, so this isn't meters cubed because this is three components of a vector, not a product. So if meters times meters squared, that's a nine. So that's meters squared on the numerator. Sorry, meters cubed. Meters squared times meters is meters cubed. In the denominator, I have meters plus meters plus, well, it's meters plus meters squared. So that's meters squared plus meters squared plus meters squared. So that's meters squared to the one half. So that's just meters cubed, meters cubed. All the meters go away. Then the Coulomb squared, one of them cancels with the Coulombs. I will end up with something in Newtons per Coulomb. So now it's just a matter of putting this monstrosity into my calculator, which I shall now do. Having put it into my calculator, I can just write down the numbers now. I only have two sig figs. There's two sig figs in Q. That's what's going to limit it in this whole product. This is the other thing. So minus 3.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Minus 3.2 times 10 to the 6th. My calculator actually wrote out all the digits, but this is an easier way to look at it. Minus 4.3 times 10, minus 4.4 times 10 to the 5, comma, 1.7, 1.8 times 10 to the 6, newtons per coulomb. Okay, now notice all these numbers are smaller than the numbers we had at the origin. Well, this point is farther than the origin was, so that's good. That's what you'd expect. Let's make sure the direction is right. It's pointing in the negative x direction, the negative y direction, and out of the board positive z direction. That looks reasonable too. So here is what the electric field is at that point, which is that point. So there you go. Problem number two is done. It was exciting. A charge plus q is located at plus x0, comma 0, comma 0. So there's a charge plus q. That is x0, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. And another charge, plus q, same charge, second charge of the same size, located at minus x0, comma 0, comma 0. So that's x0. What is the electric field a distance y away from the origin along the y-axis? Uh, y0 away, rather. So here y0. And of course, I said a distance y away. I didn't actually write that very well, because it could either be here or here along the y-axis. So let's say we wanted the plus y-axis. All right, so thinking about this, first of all, you know that this distance is the same as that distance, right? Because it's x0, y0, x0, y0. We know that the electric field from just this guy by itself is going to point that way. So let's call this particle 2. Let's call this particle 1. So this is E2, by which I mean the electric field just from particle 2, and the one just from particle 1 is going to point that way, All right? if I calculate just from the one charge. And so the sum, if I pick up this vector and put it up here, right? I've picked up E1, the total electric field should be straight up the y-axis, just from the symmetry of the situation. But what is its value? Well, OK, so let's figure this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out E1, which we know from class is going to be KQ1 over capital R1 squared R1 hat. So what do I mean by capital R1 squared? That this here is the vector capital R1. That is the vector capital R2, because they're not the same vector, right? So R1 points from the source to the observation point. And so I know that R1 vector, right, it points from here to here is x0 comma y0 comma 0. Now, notice I did that just by looking at this and knowing that it's x0 in that direction and y0 in that direction. If you wanted to be very excessively formal about it, you could have said, well, the source here, Rs, is it equal at minus x0 comma 0 comma 0. And the observation point, R, is at 0 comma y0 comma 0. 
And so capital R, which is vector R minus RS, you would get, well, 0 minus minus x0, x0 comma y0 comma 0. So notice you get the same thing if you just crank out the vector subtraction, but you can also just look at it and say, look, I can figure out what this vector is in that case. All right, so that is what R1 vector is. So the magnitude of R1 vector then is going to be the square root of x0 squared plus y0 squared. And R1 hat is going to be x0 over the square root of x0 squared plus y0 squared, comma, y0 over the square root of x0 squared plus y0 squared, comma, 0. That's R1 hat. So I could put all those in, and I will. I'll just do it right now. But I'm not going to simplify it yet. So I have a kq1 over r1 squared, so that's just x0 squared plus y0 squared, times r1 hat, so that's x0, and I'm just going to write this as r1 comma y0 over r1 comma 0. So r1 is this, right? I just substituted that. That's good. Now e2 is the same kind of thing. So that e1 here is just this. e2 is kq over r2 squared times r2 hat. R2 vector doing the same kind of thing, except notice R2 vector goes to the left, right? R2 vector has a negative x component. So R2 vector is equal to minus x0, comma y0, comma 0. The magnitude of R2 vector is x0 squared plus y0 squared. Hey, look, that's the same as R1. So I'm going to define a quantity capital R that is just the magnitude of either one of these vectors just for convenience. And then r2 hat is going to equal x0 minus x0 over r comma y0 over r comma 0, because all I've done is take r2 vector and divided it by the magnitude of r2, which is now what we're calling r. So e2 is equal to kq2. Of course, q1 and q2 are the same, so we'll get to that in a moment. It's kq2 over r2 squared, and I'll substitute in for r2 squared is x0 squared plus y0 squared. And then the vector is minus x0 over r2 comma y0 over r2 comma 0. And now to put the two together to get the total electric field, we just do a vector sum. So this total electric field here, E, is equal to E1 plus E2. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it one component at a time, because that's often the easiest way to do it. So E sub x is E1x plus E2x. So E1x is kq1, but notice q1 and q2 are both just q. So I'm going to just call it q. It's k times q over x0 squared plus y0 squared. And then the x component has an x0 over r1 but R1 is the same as R. And then E2 is equal to, oops, I'm summing E2x is KQ2, but that's just Q. R2 squared, I'll put that in. Here is the one we're really doing. And then we have a minus X0 over R2, so we'll have a KQ over X0 squared plus Y0 squared times minus X0 over R. So if you look at these two together, you will notice I have a KQ. I could factor out this KQ over r cubed, really. But I have all the same terms, except there's a plus on this one and a minus on this one. So I get ex equals 0, as expected. Well, that's very good. So let's just remember. I'll write it up here, actually. ex is 0. And now let's work on ey. ez is also going to be easy, because we're going to add, where do I even have it here? That and that. They're both zeros. So we know that EZ is 0. I'll just put that up here. So the only one that's a little bit, well, EX was a little harder to do, right? So we'll get the Y component. So here's E1. It's K, but Q1 is just Q. So we have a KQ. And I'm going to write this as capital R squared for now, right? X0 squared plus Y0 squared is R1 squared. But then capital R is the same as R, because R1 and R2 happen to be the same in this problem. And then the y component has a y0 over r. 
And then for E2, we have the same thing, KQ over R squared times Y0 over R. KQ over R squared times Y0 over R. So what we get is 2 KQ Y0 over R cubed. And now because R was something that I made up, it wasn't actually a given in the problem, I'm going to go ahead and substitute back so I have just the things that were given in the problem. So R is the square root of X0 squared plus Y0 squared. And then we have to cube it, so we get this to the 3 All right, that time, where's the battery running out? So what I was saying is that x0 squared plus y0 squared is r squared. So I take to the 1 half, a square root, to get back to r, and then cube it. So it's this whole thing to the 3 halves. So that's the y component. So finally, I now know that this e is equal to 0, comma, 2 kq y naught over x0 squared plus y0 squared to the 3 halves comma zero. And that is how you would figure out the electric field at this point, given a charge there and a charge there. Problem number three. Problem number four is where things get real. What I have told you, I'm going to try and draw in 3D here. So there's the x-axis, there's the y-axis, the z-axis, a series of 15 particles, all with the same positive charge, are evenly spaced along the y-axis with the center particle exactly at the origin. Fly. So here's what this is. There's a particle there, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven there. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven there. Okay, each one of these is a, we'll call it a plus Q. So there's 15 charges. And I ask, what is the direction? Notice I'm not asking for a magnitude. That makes this a lot easier. The direction of the electric field everywhere in the XZ plane. And this is where you think, oh my word, this is going to be painful. And it would be. So uh, I said everywhere in the XZ plane, I'm going to start by making it a little simpler. Just pick a point here on the x-axis. And let's think about that to start with. Well, okay, so the electric field from just this guy, it's the closest one, will be the biggest. Then the electric field from this guy will be in this direction. And the electric field from this guy will be in this direction. And the electric field, I did that one, from this guy will be in this direction. And from this guy will be in this direction. And from this guy will be in this direction. And this guy will be in this direction, right? And I have to do the vector sum of all of those, and I'm only half done, because now I have this one. And I have this one, and oh my goodness, this is going to be sad, right? Because I have to do the vector sum of all of those. Here's the thing to realize. Notice this one here and this one here. Those two points are the same distance from the observation point. In fact, anywhere in the XZ plane that I pick, I happen to pick this, but you can imagine going out in a circle out here into the z-plane. Any point I pick in the xz-plane, these two guys are going to be the same distance away from that point, right? Because they're going to have the same x and z distances, and then one has minus y and one has plus y, but when you get the total distance, it's going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So if the z offsets and x offsets are the same and one is plus y and one is minus y, when you square it, you'll get the same total distance. So the magnitudes of the two electric fields are the same. So from this guy we have this field, and from this guy we have this field. The magnitudes are the same. Then the next thing is to realize is that this angle is the same as that angle, because this is the same distance, that's the same distance, and this here is the same distance. Since those two angles are the same, what that means is, is that that y component and that y component, right? these two angles will be the same angles as those. So in both cases, the x component points to the left, so they don't completely cancel each other out. But this one's y component will be down, and this one's y component will be up. The y components will cancel each other out. That will also be true for this one and this one. right? This guy's y component is going to cancel that guy's y component, so this and that. So the result is going to be all the y components. For each one of these below, there's one above that will offset the y component, but the x components will all add up. And so the net electric field is going to point that way. So the answer to this question is 
everywhere in the xz plane, which way does the electric field point? So imagine all these in the xz plane. I know it's kind of hard to see with the, with the drawing because it looks like that's up. But all these in the xz plane, the vector will point directly away from the origin, it turns out. Now this won't be true everywhere, and so what I'm going to do now is look at this in 3D. All right, so here we are looking at it in 3D, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. You can see, although the axis has kind of subsumed it, I've got my charges, I've got all 15 charges up and down, and of course I've got more than just the field in the XZ plane, I've got the whole field here, well, field in lots of places. But you will notice here, everywhere in the XZ plane, in fact, if I flatten it out in the XZ plane, you can see all of these arrows in the XZ plane point in the XZ plane, and they're all pointing straight away from the origin. Now the way I did this is I told the computer, do the vector sum of the electric field from each one of these charges. I made the computer do all those sums because it's not so painful for a computer as it would be for us. And you see that there's this electric field and it drops off fairly rapidly with distance. In fact, some overlapping arrows going on there. Um, but they are all exactly in the plane. Now, if you go up a little bit, let's just look at the electric field here, which is not in the plane. You'll notice that it, it bends up a little bit. It's kind of hard to line it up so you see it. Um, but you can tell that it bends up when you, you see both of these arrows here, let me just rotate that like that, you see this arrow and that arrow, you can tell, aha, they are at a little bit of an angle. And as you go further and further up or further and further down, the angle gets more to the point where when you're past them, the electric field is actually pointing mostly up. So all of this would have been much harder if I hadn't asked for it right in the XZ plane. But right in the XZ plane, because of all the symmetry, a lot of stuff canceled out, you could have figured out these directions. So this is what that electric field looks like in three dimensions. And that are all the video problems we have for this week.